Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 28 of my algebra video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to focus on logarithmic functions and how they're going to help us whenever we come across variable exponents. And I'm going to solve a ton of problems and also show you how to graph them. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so one great benefit of logarithmic functions is that they are going to allow us to isolate variable exponents, such as, let's say you had something like 4y, which could normally cause us a lot of problems. Now, normally, if we tried to solve something like x squared is equal to 4, what we would simply do is square root both sides to get a final answer of x is equal to Two. We, however, cannot do the same if we had something like 2x is equal to 4, based off of our current knowledge, however. Now, it's very important to understand how exponents and logs differ from each other. x is equal to 2 to the y is going to be the same as y is equal to log x, like this. And to put it another way, Let's say if we have 4 squared is equal to 16, like this, and we had something like log to the 4, 16 is equal to 2, and how these different values would move around. So basically, the 2 from here is going to go right here. 16, of course, goes here, and the 4 is going to come in right there. And it's also to, important to understand the names for these different equations. So if we have log 4, 16 is equal to 2. This guy up here is known as the argument. This is known as the exponent. And this is known as our base. Likewise, if we are working with exponents, such as 4 squared, this is known as our base, and this, of course, is known as our exponent. And with that knowledge now, what I'm going to do is just simply show you how to go back and forth between a logarithmic function and exponential forms. So let's say we have log with a base of 5, and we have 25 inside of here, is equal to x, and we wanted to transform that into the exponential form, that would become 5x is equal to 25. Likewise, if we had 2x is equal to 16, the logarithmic form of this would be log with a base of 2, 16 is equal to x. And it's very important to be able to go and transform back and forth easily. And basically, as we reviewed previously, exponents ask what do we get if we multiply the base times itself a specified number of times, while logarithms ask how many times must the base multiply by itself to get our argument. So let's just work through some log problems here. If we had log with base 6, or base 6 log, whatever, you, whichever way you want to refer to it, 36, this, of course, would be equal to 2, because 6 needs to be multiplied times itself twice to get 2. Let's take it up a notch, and let's do something a little bit more complicated. So let's say we have a base 2 log, and we have 1 eighth. How are we going to solve this? Well, basically, our 1 eighth is going to be transformed into 1 over 2 to the third, which translates into 2 to the negative third. And so the log of base, the base 2 log of 1 eighth is ultimately going to be equal to negative 3. Okay, very simple. Basically, this guy went right there, they cancel out, and all we have is negative 3 left. Let's go and do something even more complicated. Let's say we had something like log base 5, and then we had 1 over the cube root of 5, how would we solve this? Well, this would translate into base 5 log 5 to the negative 1 third, which simply is equal to negative 1 third. 
And all I did here was translate this into the exponential form. And that brings us to common logarithm problems, which is just base 10 logarithms. And of course, if we had something like log base 10 log or common logarithm of let's say square root of 10, this of course would translate into log and we would simplify this to 10 with the exponent of 1 half, which immediately translates into a solution of 1 half. Let's go and do even more complicated. Let's say we have something like log 10 here and 0.01. Well, in that situation, this is going to translate into base 10 log 10 to the negative 2, which is going to translate into a final answer of negative 2. All right, let's cover natural logarithms. Again, this is going to work with Euler's number. So, and this is normally going to be written as ln. So if we had a value of e, this would translate into 1. Let's say we have something like the cube root of e. That's going to translate into 1 third. And if we had something like 1 over e cubed, this is going to translate into negative 3. All right, so pretty simple stuff here. It's just mainly just getting used to looking at just different symbols that you may not be used to and translating exponents and logarithms and so forth and so on. So now let's talk about exactly how are we going to graph a logarithm. All right, so what we have here, basically with a logarithm, the domain is going to be positive real numbers. And so let's say our domain, if I talked about domain in previous videos, so our domain is going to be 0 to infinity on x and y. And the range is going to be all real numbers. And the basic function we're going to use whenever we graph logarithms and then go and transform them is going to be log. We're going to have our base. Then we're going to have x plus h or x minus h plus k. And what happens in situations in which we have a positive h, that is going to shift to the left. And whenever we have negative value for h, that is going to shift to the right. And whenever we are dealing with k, a positive k value is going to shift upwards. And a negative k value is going to shift downwards. And what we have here, base, uh, graphed out that you can see, this equation is going to be y is equal to base 2 log. That's what you see here with the red line. And if we come in here and try to figure out how to shift, let's try a more complex type of problem here. Let's say we have something like y is equal to base 2 log x plus 3 minus 2. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, we have to look at our h. It's a plus value. That means we're going to be shifting to the left by 3. And we can come in here and we could actually draw this out. So let's just shift it over by 3. So you see we have a point right here. We're going to go 1, 2, 3. So we're going to be right in this area right there. And we see that we have another point up here where we have uh, one on the y-axis and two for x. So we're going to shift that over. One, two, three. So I'm doing this piece by piece. Then we have another point where we can define exactly what's going on. And that would be the 4x and 2y position. So we'll shift that over by three. One, two, three. Right like this. And then we can see that we are going towards 4 in this situation. So we can just basically graph this out pretty much like this. All right, this is our graph just using the changing values for h. But we also have the negative 2 here, which we're going to have to work with. So that says, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use both, both parts 
the x plus h and also the plus k. So we have a negative value here for k. That means we're going to go down and we're going to go down two spaces this time. So we're going to go down to this spot right here. And then the next one goes down two spaces. And then the next one goes down two spaces. And you can see exactly how we are working this out. And then we can come in and we can draw this like this and like this and like this. And this is our final solution for this whole entire problem. But you may ask yourself, well, what happens whenever we have a negative sign in front of log? Well, basically what we're going to do in that situation is we're going to start in this position right here. And then what I'm going to graph out is the negative log with base two. And basically we're going to have a point here going to have another point here and we are going to grow towards the two up here so this guy is going to go like this and then we're going to continue on exactly like that and there we go so that's an overview of how we can transform logarithm graphs and how we can solve a whole bunch of different logarithm problems and work with exponents that are variables and a whole bunch of other different things and like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.